Next, this evening on the Student Review, there are new judicial rumors now circulating that you need to know about. We'll have the full story ahead. Plus, hear how the NAACP is now responding to House Bill 1020. And later, hear from fed up Jackson water customers who say something needs to change soon. We'll have this story and more coming up on this Wednesday evening. Three on your side. WLBT News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. If you scrolled through social media or maybe even attended some recent political events in Madison County, you may have heard about judicial redistricting. Some local leaders and even a statewide candidate say there are discussions about separating Madison Circuit Court District from Rankin County and adding Holmes or Yazoo. Lawmakers will be tasked with drawing the judicial district lines in 2024. Party primaries are two weeks from today and absentee voting is now underway. You can vote absentee in person through August 5th. If you're mailing in your ballot, it must be postmarked on or before Election Day, August 8th. You'll be voting this year for statewide and county offices. The NAACP has filed a lawsuit after Governor Tate Reeves signed and approved House Bill 1020. Three in your size, Ariana Sander has more now. So we have enough time to fully brief the issues and prepare and give the court enough evidence so that it can issue a more uh, durable ruling on the preliminary injunction motion. The NAACP filed a motion for consolidation in federal court. The parties argued on the grounds of the House Bill 1020 containing aspects of the law deemed unconstitutional in the eyes of many citizens and residents of Jackson after Governor Tate Reeves signed and approved the bill mid-April. Plaintiffs argue that the Capitol Police were beginning to take extensive action against protesters and enforcing provisions for not having prior authorization. The justice judge embarked by including that the NAACP only filed a complaint against discrimination and had yet to file an amendment to support such claims. We have folks in that do not live in Jackson and do not live in Hines County that see fit to try to take those powers away from the elected officials. You can't have that kind of hypocrisy and call yourself a child of God. You cannot make legislation that, that discriminates against people based on race. Plaintiffs failed to argue the bill's entirety, being that parties of the NAACP had never filed a claim arguing for remedy and only challenged two sentences of the bill. Ariana Sanders, three on your side. President Joe Biden honored Emmett Till on what would have been his 82nd birthday by signing a proclamation establishing the Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley National Monument. President Biden announced how honored and excited he was to present the new proclamation to the Till family. The new monument will be anchored at three historic sites, including Chicago, Illinois, Sumner, Mississippi, and outside of Glendora, Mississippi. Jackson Mayor Shokwe and Tarla Moomba responds to questions about the lawsuit filed against the city by Retro Metro. That's the company accusing the capital city of breaching its contract with them by voting to terminate its lease with the company. When the city signed its lease with the company back in 2011, it was, a, it was for a 20-year agreement. Retro Metro purchased a portion of the Metro Center Mall. The city of Jackson had been using the space for offices and work purposes. It's where the Jackson Police Department Precinct 2 was housed. Now city leaders have voted not only to end their agreement with the company, but also to vacate the facility. A federal hearing was held over Jackson's water funding. Three on your side, Jonathan McGee reports. But it's always great to hear feedback. I wish I get it directly as opposed to in courthouse, but you know, I think a lot of those points were very valid. The ongoing court case over the water prices continues in the capital city. The judge allowed for comments to be made Thursday morning. One of the speakers, Andy Kirkin of the U.S. Water Alliance, said that although that there is an advisory for Jackson's water, it is overall safe. This advisory extends to pregnant women and children under the age of five. One point that he did caution the city on is the risk of chlorine gas spreading to a nearby neighborhood but he added that the risk of this happening is low. This is vastly contrasted by the passionate presentation by Tori Martin, who is a city attorney in Jackson. She showed pictures of brown water to the court and said that the city needs to do better about this water, stating that people are scared to use it due to health concerns. She made calls for more transparency from city leaders and raised concerns about where the money is going on this water crisis, calling into question the credentials of officials overseeing the issue. This is going to be a long process, and there has to be uh, ways to address grievances that people may have. 
The water here in the capital city is a never ending conversation. I got the chance to speak with a Jackson resident about his experience and what he wants to see done in the future. If you live in Jackson, then there's no doubt that you've experienced water problems. Residents say they can't do everyday tasks in their home, such as cooking, showering, or taking a simple sip of water without worrying about if the water in their home is safe to use. It's been uh, oily and soapy and uh, coming out the faucets. Uh, we buy, buy water, but we're kind of concerned about, you know, the shower and taking baths and things. You have to put a little bleach in your water and stuff. And, you know, you had to boil your water. One of Dickerson's concerns is constantly having to buy bottled water. He says it's starting to add up. He also is concerned that the water could be causing him health problems. Yeah, when we take a shower, uh, we, we're not, I'm not sure, but I, I get a lot of bumps uh, on my, uh, around my ankles and things uh, and my feet. So uh, I'm, hey, you know. It's, it's a concern of mine. Another issue is poor communication between officials and residents. Residents are told that their water is safe, but their water is showing a different story. You call and they keep saying it's safe to drink. You know, they know this water in Jackson ain't safe to drink. You know, they got all these millions of dollars to fix this problem. And he keep talking about they f it's fixed and this and that, but we know. Dickerson says the only thing he wants to see is the water problem solved. I want to see it fixed. I want. I want. I, I don't want to keep saying it's safe to drink when it's not safe to drink. I, you know, fix it. Dickerson is hoping for more transparency between residents and city officials in the future. Imagine not having consistent access to food for every person in your household. It is a sad reality for many Mississippians. Three on your sides. Caleb Harris has more now. With what once looked like a fully stocked fridge, many residents have to look at empty refrigerators and freezers since the power outage spoiled much of their food. Some residents aren't sure if their wallets or pocketbooks can handle restoring their fridge. One resident says that it's hard to replace a full fridge. But I know it would take me, I don't know how long, to fill my freezers back up. And I don't know if I'm going to try to fill them back up now. Many residents like her make too much money for government assistance, but not enough to restock their fridge. Your complaints and needs do not fall on deaf ears, as Councilman Kenneth Stokes announced a new aid that will help restore food and other essentials. We hope to have gift cards at a store. If you can't go to the store, we'll go pick up what you need. But we want, we must help the needy. Stokes also added that it's important that you do not eat spoiled food. It may seem innocent and easy, but it can kill you or cause serious harm to yourself, especially if you are a senior citizen. You can contact Stokes' office anytime Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can find Stokes' office number on our website at WLBT.com. And so far, it's been rather nice out there for us as we take a look from Bank of Forest in Forest, Mississippi. Right now, currently, clear skies and plenty of sunshine out there. Temperatures across the viewing area. Jackson, 83. It feels like 86. Natchez, 81. Feels like 86. So the air temperature where it is, our feels like temperatures are a bit warmer currently. The hourly forecast shows us rising into the middle to upper 90s today, getting plenty of sunshine. A few high clouds can't be ruled out, but of course, there's those triple digits feels like temperatures making their way in after 1 p.m. Of course, it's between more news and weather coming up.